In my last video, I was going over pirates, and I realized they made a few uh, small errors, and I wanted to make sure I went over everything in uh, complete depth um, so you understand how you can design ships in the early game. Now one thing I really want to go over is what you can do to fight against an overwhelming force, um, let's say the Cravers, and you don't have access to the new types of hulls, you don't have access to any of this stuff. So let's make a really basic early game ship that, that can uh, help defend you, and I can explain exactly how they work. So, I am going to be using the, the next tier weapons, uh, it makes things a little bit easier. Um, now, what you should notice is that there are two types of weapon slots, there are top mounted weapons, and there are side-mounted weapons. Now, top-mounted weapons are actually slightly more effective than side-mounted weapons because the broadside only has a 90 degree of rotations to, to hit the enemy, while the top-mounted gun has a more wide firing arc, which um, is important when you look at the flotillas. As you can see, um, when they turn to fight each other, they actually have to angle at each other to hit each other. So that is something that not a lot of people know about that you have to keep in mind. Now, early game, there's really no best early game weapon. Um, a lot of people like to say, oh, missiles do the most damage, they must be the best. Well, guns do the most damage, they must be the best. What you got to understand is their ranges. Now, the flak, this one, all basic ultra densic slugs and all the other slugs, as we have to look at is their DPS and their ranges. As you can see, even at the closest range, the flak is still only going to be hitting 85% of the time. So they're not doing 39 damage. They're not. They're doing about eh, 34, 35 damage. Let's look at the missiles. The missiles are going to be doing 61 damage, 100% of the time at max range. It is very much more likely that you're going to be dealing with more max range than you are going to be with close range. Um, energy weapons are also not to be laughed at either. They have a chance to do critical strikes, which do bonus damage. Wow, I think. If it's doing 54 damage, a critical strike will do about 64. I think it's like a 10% damage bonus or something. Um, there are two types of energy weapons. There's the basic phase beam and the sync lasers. Um, sync lasers have a higher crit chance, but of course they're only 100% effective at medium range, while the uh, phase beams are 100% effective at all ranges. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do to play with these. Um, one thing to note with missiles is that missiles are countered by flak. Um, these guys have a flak, as you can see, damage versus missiles. When you have a missile, let's watch it fire. There you go. It's firing, I think, one or two missiles. I think it's one. I think it's one missile. That missile has a salvo health of 90. As you can see, this thing is actually, it will do 180 damage to one of those missiles. So just having one flak will counter one of those missiles. So what you need to do is either have many of them, as you can see, that gives you more firepower. You can also put in a swarm missile. Swarm missiles will try to overwhelm flak. They will fire multiple missiles. It doesn't actually show up, but there's about eight or nine of them. Um, let's see. As you can see, they have... Uh, they have ten missiles with twenty health each. But the flak has to target each one of them individually, which is very difficult. Um, early game, if you're going at somebody who has no flak, you're definitely going to go missiles, and you're going to go at max range, uh, if, uh, a max range battle fire. Um, if they have missiles, you're going to want to put on some uh, swarm missiles. Um, if they don't, usually people like to prioritize uh, plating early game, reactive plating. Um, then you can go with the sync lasers and see if you can get lucky with some shots at a medium range. Um, like, for example, the Cravers tend to go for um, kinetics, a basic ultra densic slugs at close range. Um, this is because their uh, coordin their their uh, quest gives them a coordinator, which is a tier tier two uh, defensive ship that starts with a ultra densic slug. So they're going to want to put that thing at close range and have all their ships match it. Um, some smart Craver players will try and mix and match with maybe some energy, but uh, it really just depends. Typically the AI will go for all um, close range, this type of stuff, to match their thing. So in order to counter that, you can go max range phase beams. It can be quite good, because then they will have no way to target you at long range, and you can fire. And then you can go with max armor, and they won't do too much damage. Um, armor is actually a little more effective than uh, the shielding early on. Um, because armor will apply always, while the shield, once it's penetrated, will go on a cooldown, and then it won't work anymore. 
Um, these things also give you a larger health bonus, as you can see. With uh, the plating on here, our health is extremely reduced. So having plating is usually always a good idea just for the health bonus. Um, another thing to note is, let's take a look at um, another class. Let's look at the, uh, the attacker. Um, what I went over last time was the rolls. Uh, the attacker roll means that the ship will coordinate within its flotilla to attack one ship. And it will prioritize the protector or coordinator ships, which is um, this ship, the protector. What the protector means is that its um, its defenses, its platings, are actually more effective. Um, as you can see, 10% on plating and shields, and they taunt the attackers. The attackers target the coordinators, which is the ship first, which means they draw their fire. They're the tankier ship. So. You want to make sure that these guys are more prioritized to take a lot of damage, which is, you know, putting more plating on them. Um, they will actually target the attacker ships first, which is quite interesting. You can do a few things with that. Some races have coordinator ships that have more guns than others. You could actually trick somebody into having a full fleet of coordinators and just destroy all their attackers and ignore the coordinators. The Cravers have an extremely weak coordinator, for example. Um, so sometimes you could go with all coordinators and defeat the Cravers that way. Um, typically, for a coordinator, because they're not going to be doing as much damage, you can put more of a supporting role on them. For example, you could put swarm missiles on them and have that be their only weapon, and forego swarm missiles on your attacker, and just hope that these will overwhelm their flak. Um, you could also put flak on them. If, if you're going to be targeted, if they're going to be targeted by a bunch of missiles, putting flak on your coordinator makes sense because they're going to be targeted and just have them be fodder and hope, try and help, help, uh, help them survive as long as possible. Another annoying thing to do is just put phase beams on them. It doesn't matter what range they're at. Um, they'll always be fighting at their most effective and it will add some mixed damage into your fleet. So when somebody clicks on your fleet, they're a little confused as to what damage you're doing and they might split their defenses more between uniform shields and plating which is very useful because if your main damage source is torpedoes this plating is basically useless and they're losing out on an insane amount of health i mean look at that look how much health they're losing that's about 3,000 health that's insane um these types of modules these salvagers are kind of useless i wouldn't worry about it um for attackers getting this type of thing which is a, a kinetic amplifier which can be found here. This is the kinetic amplifier, and this is the plasma intensifier. These can be extremely important, depending on what type of uh, strategy you want to go for. The issue is, is with the United Empire, if they put their kinetic intensifier on here, um, they're going to have almost no speed. They're not going to be able to move. In a pinch for defending a system, um, this can be an effective option. But for actually fighting, it's not so great, especially because they moved the H-field accelerators onto hero ships. Early on, this is not that great of a design, having uh, this on here. Um, because they have so many guns, they have three guns, you'll probably be fine going like this. Um, again, this is where faction-specific uh, fleet designs take precedence. Um, let's see. Another thing to note is uh, military behemoths. Um, early on, they're not so great. Um, you can put a lot of guns on them, for example. Uh, let's put a lot of guns. That's quite a bit of firepower. Um, the issue is, is they don't have a lot of health to start out with. Um, how you can buff them up is this tech right here actually increases their health by 14,000. This does it, this does it by 7,000, this does it by 7,000, and uh, this does it by 14,000. So after you get a few stacking health effects, that's where behemoths really become a huge powerhouse. Because the issue with behemoths is, is even if they're super powerful, if they're surrounded by a bunch of attackers, they're going to go down by their focus fire extremely quickly. Because they're going to have to go through these protectors first, which is extremely difficult. Um, another valid strategy is to put uh, OTG delivery gear. This increases the amount of manpower. You can make a lot of really cheap ships, put a lot of manpower on them, and then just swarm their systems and just deploy as soon as you get there and eat away all their manpower. Um, but yeah, pretty much that's that's a lot of the main uh, early strategies you can go for. Um, really using maximizing the use of your colonizer for multiple roles is important. For example, the colonizer can not only function as a seizure, it can function as a troop transport. Um, 
because this one has a gun, it has even more uses, early game against pirates. Um, maximizing the use of your exploration ship is also important um, to fight pirates. Um, some are better than others, of course. This one actually has two weapon slots again, so it's quite useful. Um, that's basically how you're going to run the early game war. But really, if you're going to fight somebody effectively, you need your protectors, you need your coordinators, um, or you need your attackers, I mean. Basically, that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully, this will help you uh, fight those fucking cravers and fight those pirates. Have a nice day.